In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix the overheating problem on the MacBook Pro, the A1398. What happens is the heat sink thermal conductive paste goes bad and you need to replace it. So I'm going to show you how to fix that problem. The first thing you're going to need are a couple of tools. You will need the 4PL pentalobe driver. You will need a Torx T5 driver. You will need some tweezers and a hard plastic tool here to remove the battery. And what I'm going to do is we're now remove the bottom of the MacBook Pro to get you going. Do note that these screws on the front and back are shorter than the side screws. So do note that as you take these screws apart, don't mix the order up. So we're gonna take the P4 tool and then begin removing these screws and they're only subtly larger, but nevertheless, don't mix them up because if you screw in too hard, you can damage the frame of your computer. So what I'm going to do is remove the corner outside screws that are taller and put them in one pile. That way I don't mix them up. And then I will remove the front screws which, oh, it looks like the front screws are tall as well. It's the two back screws that are shorter. Yep, sure enough, those two there. And then remove the back screws here, which are shorter. It's really hard to see in the video, but just do note they are shorter. There we go. Okay, so I've got those separated out. And now you simply lift the lid here and note that the bottom magnets hold the lid on to the chassis all right so now we're in business and also i will remove the battery that way in case i accidentally drop a screw i don't short out my computer and you just pry this out and the battery is removed and deactivated in order to remove the heat sink, you will need to remove several parts. The first are these rubber seals. You'll need to just gently pull them back. Don't tear them. Okay. And then you will need to remove this rubber cap right here with your tweezers. Just simply pry that off. Put that to the side. Do note that this screw here and this screw here that hold the main heat sink are different lengths so do not mix those up and this is where your t5 screwdriver comes in handy Do note this is under a little bit of tension as well. Now you can begin removing the screws along the heat sink here. Please note that on the GPU, this screw and this screw are shorter than this screw and this screw. So do not mix those up. These two are taller and these two are shorter. And you will again use your T5 driver. Now 
And if you can place the screws in the exact same position and do not touch them, then you will be in business. Okay. And now you'll see that the heat sink is somewhat loose. And it is loose over here, right? Okay, and now you will take off the CPU screws. Do note that these are springs, so once you unscrew, this can actually pop off. So be very careful. Put the screws back in the same order that you found them. All of these have, all these screws have Loctite on them as well. So just be very careful as you remove these screws. Because if they fly across the room, you will have to go hunt them down. Okay, and then just like that, you very gently pry. Now that thermal paste might be welded on there, so give it a good little wiggle. And that's all it takes. Now you can see that thermal paste on there is still gooped up, but it looks like it's kind of a mess, so I will clean it off and then redo it. In order to remove the thermal paste from your GPU and CPU, you will need some isopropyl alcohol and a whole bunch of Q-tips. And you can begin slowly, gently cleaning everything off here. With that, make sure you do not get the isopropyl on a surface because it will destroy your table. And first, to build confidence, remove the thermal paste from the heat sink. Let me break the copper tabs. Make sure that the vents are all clear of any dust and debris while you have this off. Now that I have everything cleaned, the heat sink is all cleaned. I've removed the thermal paste gunk, or at least done my best to remove it. It's still all over the place. And the CPU and GPU polished. I'm now going to apply the thermal paste, this stuff here. It is not cheap, but what's your laptop worth? Woo, just a little bit here and just a little bit there because it's going to get smashed. Don't go crazy. Put the cap back on the thermal grizzly paste. And now I put the heat sink back on and I'm very careful to place it. But what I do is as I'm placing this, minding the screw holes and oops, <laughs> have to put this over here first. So I give this a bit of a wiggle. And then I actually prefer to double check to make sure the thermal paste is on all the surface. You can see that there. And now I simply reverse my screw down procedure and put everything back together with the T5 screwdriver. Okay. 
and I'll take a toothbrush and even though it should be a non ooh, there's a little goo in there even though this should be a non-conductive brush this is all I have and I push the battery connector back down and secure it in place now the laptop is energized so do not drop anything on here I blow off the interior and I also wipe all the dust off it's not too bad but okay and these two magnets here and here latch onto the board I simply make sure to put these little rubber covers back down that helps seal the board up and protect the cabling and I simply drop this back on and you can feel the magnetic catches catch and now I put the screws back into the computer and now we will see if my laptop actually powers up doesn't overheat stay tuned